Hello everyone, uh, my name is Hong Eng from KAIST and today I'd like to talk about uh, dynamic security analysis of LT control plane and our tool named LT First. So let me start with this short introduction. So as you know, LTE is everywhere and it can be used in, and these days it is widely used in many critical applications and it is used in everyday life, so the security of LTE is becoming very, very important. So before, oh, oh. I think it doesn't work. Oh, yeah. So before we uh, talking about the details about LT security, let's, talk, let's see how LT works. So first, the LT phone is called user equipment, in short, UE. And this UE makes a radio connection with a, with a nearby base station called Inode B. And using this radio connection, the UE communicates with a mobility management entity, MME, to register to the LT network. And the, this MME is one of the most important nodes in LT core network. So it handles uh, all the critical control plan procedures, such as uh, registration, identification, and user authentications. And after the UE completes the registration procedure, it just uh, connected, finally connected to the internet through the gateways. So the key point here is that the control plane procedures in LTE marked as red lines always come before the user plane procedures marked as blue lines. So if there's a single failure during the control plane procedures, uh, the whole LT service won't be provided to the LT users. So from the attacker's perspective, yeah, so, the prof oh, so from the attacker's perspective, the exploiting, finding and exploiting the vulnerable point in the control plan procedure are the easiest way to deny or hack LT services. So last year, LTE inspector found various security problems in LTE specification using formal analysis of uh, LTE control plane. They found a lot of attacks exploiting specification problems. However, formally analyzing LTE specification is not enough to find potential security problems in LTE network because there are several ambiguities in LTE specification. First, they include a lot of uh, exception cases, and they also leave freedom to the carriers and vendors about their implementation details. They also have protocol conformance test standards, but it's not about the security. So from these facts, even if the specification is correct, the, the carrier's network may have implementation or configuration bugs. And in addition, there were several studies regarding the implementation of uh, LT control plane. Uh, these studies mostly focused on the attacks using fake face station. And using this fake face station, the attacker can uh, steal user identity and track the user's location or perform those attacks on the victim. However, those works, those uh, studies mostly focus on the identifying the phone side vulnerabilities. Then, instead of using a uh, fake PlayStation, what about using a uh, fake LTE phone to test commercial LTE network? And unfortunately, to the best of my knowledge, there is very few research about network side vulnerabilities in commercial LTE networks. Then why is it hard to uh, test commercial network. There, in fact, there are huge challenges to test operational IT network. First, sending malicious signal to a commercial network is not allowed. 
And second, it is hard to control commercial baseband chipsets for simulating malicious behavior. Third, uh, the carrier's net LT network is a closed system, so all the information about their deployment and configurations are hidden by carriers. In this research, we overcome these challenges like this. So first, we got carriers testbed access to test their network. And we, instead of using commercial baseband chipsets, we used open source LT software and a software ready device to generate and send malicious input. And we only used device side debugging tools and open source software to decide whether each test case is problematic or not. So in our goal is to investigate potential security problems of control plan procedures in the operational IT network to find either the specification or implementation or configuration bugs. We decided to adopt dynamic testing method against commercial IT networks. And this is our this is an overview of our tool named LT Fuzz. And first it generates test cases based on LT specification and the co uh, commercial control plan logs. And then it executes test cases towards both the LT network and baseband chipsets. And third, based on the test results, we classify product behavior. And then lastly, we construct the attacks and validate these attack scenarios with the carriers. So let me explain the details about our testing procedure. So among various pro control plan protocols, we targeted two control plan protocols. One is radio resource control, RSC, which is a communication protocol between UE and InnoB. And another one is non-access stratum, NAS. It is also a communication protocol between UE and an MME. So these two protocols handle key control functions such as radio connection establishment and network attach, and location management and session management for the UAs. The simplest way to test these two protocols is to test all the possibilities and all the procedures of this pro protocol. However, there are a number of test ty uh, message types and message variations and procedures and even options. Therefore, uh, inspecting all those combinations are infeasible in practice. So we just narrow down the scope by defining basic security properties based on LT specification. So like this, we define three security properties and we generate test cases that violate these security properties. For example, we, in, we insert invalid values to the sequence number message authentication code, or the security health types. And for the other remaining field values, such as RSC message and NAS message, it should be randomly mutated. However, since we test against the commercial IT network, it is not allowed to trigger any crash crashes that may disable the, L the commercial IT services. And even in a te carrier's test plan network, it is not allowed to do this because, as you know, there are a lot of engineers working all day and night to deploy their 5G network. So what we have done is randomly picking field values from commercial control plane logs. So first, we extracted commercial control plane, lo commercial control plane logs from the phones over an ear and saved the field values which are only used in the commercial network. And then we just randomly pick those values. So by doing this, we, should, we could not, we, we won't uh, cause any memory corruption errors, and we just hoped it, and it won't happen. And then we generate test cases. After we generate test cases, we have to test each case. And first, the victim UE is normally registered to the LT network. 
Then we implemented USA Monitor to analyze control plate traffic and the USA changes in the victim UE. And at the same time, the tester UE sends test cases one by one as if it is a victim UE using the victim UE's identity. And it just checks response from the operational team network. And also, USA Monitor checks if the connection state of the victim UE is changed or not by pinging google.com. Based on these two data, we had to decide whether each case is problematic or benign. And the big challenge here is that so many different behavior is observed from each test case. So it is because each carrier has different configurations and it deploys different network equipment from different network vendors. And even in a single carrier, network equipment differs by the service area. And it is in addition, the location of the tester, uh, I mean, the location of the attacker and the victim affects the results. So there are four possible cases depending on whether the attacker and the, test and the victim UE is located in the same cell area or in node B area or MME pool area. So it is very, very, it is so confusing when it is done in manually. So we develop a simple decision tree like this. So here, all the test cases are invalid, so it should be silently uh, dropped as in case 4, B9, and all other ca test cases are classified as problematic, case 1 and case 2, case 3. For example, case 2 means a um, test message with a spoofed ID is accepted in the receiving entity, for example, MME. Then, the attacker can perform spoofing attack to, as, a, as if it is a victim UE. And if the victim UE state is changed to the deregistration, as in case one and case three, then the attacker can just use this test, mes test message for performing those attack on the victim. This is LT first test environment for network testing, we targeted two network vendors, and each, each carrier has different and various network vendors, MME vendors and NLP vendors. And we also adopted similar approach to test baseband chipsets, such as Qualcomm, Exynos, uh, High Silicon, and MediaTek. And for the implementation, we implemented test input collector and message generator for about 2,000 lines of code. And for tester, we modified SRSUE for network testing and OpenLTE and SRSLTE for baseband testing. We also uh, implemented USD monitor by using signal link collection and, anal and analysis tool, which is also an open source software to extract the control plane traffic from the phones. So here's our findings. So in total, 51 cases are classified into problematic behavior, and among them, 36 were new findings, and 15 was previously known vulnerabilities. So these are mainly categorized into five vulnerability types, and we also validated our findings to, with the corresponding carriers and vendors. As a result, there were no false positives, but there were two false negative cases. And this is because the response from the operational network was just encrypted, so our decision tree cannot correctly decide whether this case is accepted or not. So this is the table, summary table of our findings, and we just list the possible attack cases for each test message. So the left side, the red, the red box shows the specification problem, and the blue box shows the implementation problem from different MME vendors. And the green box shows the implementation problems from the different baseband chipsets. And if you see the yellow box, there are two different attack cases in one test message. 
And this means that different MA vendors had different vulnerabilities and different attack cases. And from now on, I'll introduce one attack scenario among the various attacks we have validated with the carriers. So the, so the attack is remote deregister attack. Here, uh, the attacker just exploits one of the 15 vulnerable cases in NAS procedure. So the victim UE is normally registered to the operationality network. And the attacker makes an RSC connection as if the victim UE and trigger invalid NAS, NAS procedure using the victim UE's identity. Then the operationality network just thinks that something went, something went wrong with the victim UE and just changed the state of the victim UE from registered to the detached. Then the victim UE cannot receive any uh, LT service. And for after some time, the victim UE just downgraded to the legacy network such as 2G and 3G. And here's the demo. The attacker and the victim is apart from 3.6 kilometer, which means attacker and victim is connected to a different inner B, but in the same MME pool area. And the MME pool area is Oh, I didn't start it yet, sorry. Yeah, so attacker and victim is connected to a different you know, B and it is connected to, it is, it is within the same MME pool area. And MME pool area is known to be very, very large. And right after the attack starts, the victim UE is just disconnected from the network. Uh, whatever the victim UE tries to do, it, is fail, it fails to connect to the LT network again. And after some time, the victim UE downgraded downgrade into 3G network, which is known to be much less secure than LT. So for all of our findings, we responsibly disclosed to the corresponding bodies, such as standard bodies, 3GPP and GSMA, and for the implementation bugs, we reported to the corresponding vendors, network vendors, and based on chipset vendors. And for the implementation bugs, it will be patched soon. So in overall, we have to know that operational IT networks are very, very complicated and not as secure as we expected. And in a operational IT, and in a real operational IT network, the carrier has different configurations and deploys different network equipment by service area. And these kinds of complicated deployments generate extremely complicated behavior. So sometime, for some, sometimes the attacker can exploit this kind of complicated behavior to attack or hack deny LT services. So in this research, we have implemented LT first a semi-automated dynamic testing tool for both networks and devices. And we identify, uh, by using this LT fuzz, we identify various vulnerabilities using open source LT software and a simple decision tree. And LT fuzz considers a realistic attack assumptions in operational LT network. Unlike previous studies, just assume a simplified network environment. So then as a future work, we'd like to extend LT first to support other protocol control, uh, other control protocols that is not investigated yet. And we also would like to test 5G if the open source version of 5G is allowed. So thank you, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Uh, really impressive set of attacks. We have time for one or two questions, please. I'm Sujin from CMU. Um, is it correct to say this is a stateless fuzzer? Or if in the case of stateful, would the techniques so, like this work well? So in RLC and NAS, there are very complicated state machines. And in here, we just assume there are two states, the registration, R, R, uh, in RLC, idle and connected. And in NAS, 
It is the registration and connected state. I see. Yeah. And one more question is, uh, I, it, it looks like you're inferring the message format from the control log, is that correct? Yeah, right, right. I see. So if, what was the reason, because there are many other techniques to infer the protocol format. Yeah. So what was the reason you took, I'm just curious why you took that approach opposed to a lot of existing approaches to infer the protocol format? So the main reason I, I use control plane, uh, commercial control plane log is to not to see, not to learn about all the formats about from the specification. And another reason is that we should not trigger any crashes by randomly making the uh, message formats. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. So just a quick question. Thank you. Very interesting talk. Could you could the attacker choose the victim? I missed that point. Yeah, sure. If the if the attacker just know the identity of the victim, then yeah. Thank you. One more round of applause for Hong Il.